All right. So, what are these styles? Coercive is immediate compliance. Do this now. Why? I don't have to tell you why. You just do it because I'm telling you to do it. So, it's do what I tell you. Monkey and a day, karna. I was ne. Karna. Then, do no. So, that is the dictatorial style, right? So, it's strongly negative, but it does have its place. For some people who are problem employees, you have to use this with them. If you don't, they will not do anything at all. <laughs> yeah? But you have to think now. And you have to look inwards at yourself, right? Because I can't do that. You have to think for yourself. If your main style is that, then I think there is a problem. Are you understanding? If everything is, you get done by that, do it because I'm telling you, then that's purely coercive, right? People don't like that for a long time. Imagine you won't like that for a long time. No? If you're every day told exactly what to do, not given any freedom, just sit there, do this, do this, because I'm telling you, you're not going to like it, right? So that's cause. Authoritative is not do what I tell you, but come with me. See, we have a beautiful vision there. See, we can help 20,000 people next year save their lives. Do you know my story? We have a compelling vision. We have a compelling vision. So the authoritative style is we create a clear direction. We create a clear vision. And now people want to go to that vision. So you say, now, come with me. Let's go together. Let me show you how. Are you understanding the difference? The difference is coercive. There is no vision, right? It's just like karna. Do this, do this. Because I'm telling you, do it. Authoritative, it starts with, yeah, a vision. Buddhika, yeah, a vision. This is what we are trying to do. And the vision itself is actually inspiring people, right? You know why? We won the 1996 World Cup. <laughs> there was a very compelling vision, yeah, which was... We are not going to, as a team, we are not going to tolerate this nonsense. We have great unity. We have one vision. We have a single purpose. And what was the single purpose? To prove all those idiots wrong that Sri Lanka was a great team, right? Are you, are you with me? Are you, is that resonating with you, right? Yeah, because Morelli was betting, you know, called on no ball over and over and over in Australia and they had a horrific time, right? And no sooner after that was over, Arjuna does some remarkable things. Yeah, they take risks. That's a case study in itself, right? So what he asked Sarath and uh, Kalu to do? First ball itself, hit it over, hit it over, hit it over. The world had never seen anything like this. No other country had a, had, a, had an answer to that, right? Now if you look at it, every team does it, right? Now it's a norm. By the way, that's another learning. Have you noticed, right? Earlier when they first did it, every other team's style was, first 30 overs, play it safe, last 15 or so, you open up. Correct? Wasn't that the style? And what was the average score in a, in a one day those days? 250 was considered a good score, no? Correct? Today, even if you get 450, you are not guaranteed of winning, no? <laughs> uh, isn't it true? Same number of overs. What has changed? What has changed? More than that, what has changed? Mindset has changed. Do you all understand? Mindset has changed. From we cannot do this to no, we can. Are you, are you getting this? It's all about mindset. It's all about mindset. Mindset has changed. Do we have a winning attitude? See, after World War II, when Japan was flat, and that is why they still have a lot of respect for JR, right? JR Jayavadana. Because he got up at the UN and he was the only person who spoke for Japan. When everyone else was trying to, you know, bury them even more. That is why. Alright? When Japan was flat and the whole world said they were flat, only one country disagreed. Who was that? When the whole world said, Japan, you're flat, you'll never recover. Who disagreed? Come shout it, you know. Japan! Japan said, no, you're wrong. And what happened? That was the birth of the Toyotas, the Suzukis, the Hondas, the Sonys. Yeah? <laughs> right, so coming back to this. Affiliative is all about people come first, right? So during COVID time, the companies that still got productivity from people, started using a lot of affiliative style because people are worried am i going to die what's going to happen to my family at that time you don't you can't say you don't i don't care about your family what do the work is it then i don't care about you also <laughs> right so affiliative style is showing people come first especially when there is a lot of stress in the team people are worried so this is a good time to actually develop this affiliative style you need to reassure people you need to give them confidence, give them comfort, show them, yes, we can come out of this. Yes, I am with you. Yes, I will help you. Yeah, yes, we can. So Obama's, uh, uh, some was talking about Obama, Obama's first camp campaign slogan was, yes, we can. And that resonated with so many people, right? Millions of people. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Right? Democratic is, what do you think? Democratic. By the way, 
If you want to get input from your team, now this is another learning, right? Let's say you are the leader, you are talking to your team and there is a challenge and you want to find a solution. If you want to get ideas, and I'm sure you do, never give your idea first. <laughs> never give your solution first. If you do, you will not get many other solutions from your team. Are you with me? Because let's say I have told you something and I'm your boss and you know for sure Sanjeev is wrong here. Most of the people will not stand up and say that. Why? Because you're the boss and they don't want to upset you. Plus your ego also. If somebody says, Pubudu, I'm very dine, then Pubudu has boss says, Oh, I'm very dine, which is a you know, little bit uncomfortable, right? So what does Pubudu do as he's clever? He says, Tell me, what would you do? Now they'll ask you, so boss, what, would, what are you saying? What would you do? Say, no, I have some ideas. But Mama Kian is still, okay, Mama Kian, what do you say? What should you do? What can we do? Get the ideas. Now, even if they disagree with you, they will say the idea because they don't know what you're thinking. And even if the idea you had is now wrong, you don't have to say that. Because you listen to the idea and say, ah, yes, I was thinking what Venuna was thinking. I, I, I was not, but I was thinking, yeah, right? <laughs> but right, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, so there is, you don't have to feel upset, right? Harif. So, Democrat. Pace setting is a, is a dangerous style to use unless everyone in your team is as clever and as dynamic and as energetic and as driven as you. All right. Now, pace setting is where the leader is fantastic. So, leader do no? <laughs> at the pace, expecting the team to keep up with him. Okay, you understand? So, if I'm the leader and I'm going now fast, I'm going at my pace because I think that's a fantastic pace. You guys have to be back. Balnagota, Anita, Vatila, Marila, along the way, right? You have a lot of dead bodies along the way. Are you understanding, gentlemen? Yeah, right? So, that's a dangerous style to adopt unless everyone in the team is, you know, highly driven and like, like super powerful, right? It's like, for example, as a, let's just take an example, if you take a company like Google, they could probably use pace setting in a lot of circumstances. Why? Because Google being Google is attracting some of the smartest minds in the world, right? Yeah. So if everybody is equally clever, everybody is equally driven, we can all run at a tremendous pace, right? Are you understanding? Yeah. But if everybody is not, people will fall aside, right? Yeah. This is a mistake I made many times in my uh, life. <laughs> yeah. To my detriment, actually. It, it affected me negatively. Yeah. Because what happens is, if I'm trying to run fast, the rest of the team gets demotivated, right? Hey, we cannot do this, we cannot catch up, we cannot, you know, we cannot, right? So we have to always think, who do we have in the team? What are their capacities? How fast can they run? Not that you have to stop running fast, but you have to be aware what's happening with everyone else. Maybe there might be, let's say, if this is my team, there might be Shanae, who is who can run at my same space. So I give him higher targets. And allow him to run faster because that's what he wants. But let's say as Upul, who you know is not. So I give Upul something that would be a stretch target for Upul, which is 25% of Shana's target. <laughs> Are you understanding? Because if I give Upul also Shana's target, he won't even achieve the 25%, right? Because he gets so demotivated, he won't even do that. Yeah? Alright? So it's space setting, right? And coaching is, yeah. Helping people along the way, coaching them. So let's do this now, let's do this. Now you did this, how did that work? Let's do this, let's do this, right? So those are the six styles. 